So you want to play the Order of the Scribes Wizard, but as far as flavor and creativity goes, you're having a real tough time making your character really unique. So I ask you, what if an eldritch horror split your consciousness in two? What if you were the wizard's familiar instead, or you got your own Jarvis? Let's summon your wizardly quill and manifest from your mind new ideas for your next wizard character. Hello Acolytes, welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker and here we talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. As you may see, I'm in a new space. So while I get settled in here, enjoy our sponsor for this video. RPG Stories is a new virtual tabletop software featuring a massive world builder that will give you the chance to create your sessions in a fully 3D environment and play with your party. Everything you need all in one software. In addition to its unique VTT features, it will contain 3D assets, heroes, and monsters for all kinds of RPGs, from fantasy, modern, and sci-fi, which you will be able to 3D print as well. RPG Stories is coming to make any Game Master's life easy when it comes to world building and every player's dream come true when it comes to tabletop RPG sessions. RPG Stories team wants this to be a community VTT, letting the fans vote for the final features and models that will be implemented in the final version, plus giving all export files for commercial free use, which I particularly like. Go to their Kickstarter pre-launch page linked below and hit the notify me button to get alerted when it goes live September 1st. Thank you RPG Stories for sponsoring this video. Now in Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, Scribes Wizards are masters at written magics. So much so that they give sentience to their own spellbook to aid them. You start out with a magical quill that lets you copy spells in literal minutes and never requires ink. Your spellbook is also given a consciousness that allows you to switch out damage types of your spells if you have another spell with it. In later levels, you can conjure this consciousness as a separate intangible entity, allowing it to move freely, give off light, telepathically communicate to you, and cast spells through its space as if you were there. As a bonus, you also get to copy down your own spells into spell scrolls and then cast them at a higher level for free. And then as your capstone ability, this awakened spellbook of yours gives you advantage on all arcana checks for magical lore and it can sacrifice parts of itself in order to negate any type of damage done to you. You will temporarily lose access to some of your spells, unfortunately, but at least you're alive to cast another one another day. A pretty evocative subclass already, but now that we are familiar with the mechanics of it, let's reflavor it and subvert it into 10 new concepts. Keeping the same mechanics as always, but changing the flavor to stretch your creativity for your next character. First, let's look at the Carver Scribes Wizard. Normally your spellbook is just that, binded leather with papyrus pages. But what if you got really creative? Your spellbook is a collection of bones with spells written on them. But what about sheets of bark or dried flowers within the book? Gemstones where you store spells in them or thin shale tablets that you carve into switching your wizard quill with a hammer and a pick. And I actually played that one. Uh, admittedly, I needed a bag of holding for all of those tablets, but it created fun and evocative flavor. Because then with that flavor, you get to think about what your awakened mind would look like. Perhaps your collection of bones compile into a skeleton of a dead monstrosity or a nature spirit sprung from the dried flowers in the book, or your shale tablets magically compile into the shape of a stone golem. I've said it before in other videos, but get really creative with your spellbook. It's the main flavor you get as a wizard. But speaking of common stereotypes for the wizard, we look at the familiar. Instead of an awakened spellbook, your source of magic may already be sentient. In fact, your familiar is the smarter one in the relationship. They learn and study spells in their own mind, and without opposable thumbs, they need you to cast it. So they whisper these spells into your ear as you cast them, or telepathically do so. In fact, it is a great excuse to play a dumb wizard for a change. How's that for subversion? But what if we really wanted to subvert it? What if you were the familiar? Your awakened mind is your master that, through a rogue spell, is now trapped their consciousness within you or their spellbook that you then stole. And while having access to this book or having them trapped within you, their biology combines with yours. So instead of a raven familiar, you're now a kenku. Or instead of a fish familiar, you're now a lakatha. A cat, a tabaxi, a bunny, a herongon, a turtle, a turtle, 
you get the picture. In fact, in this subclass, you are able to essentially create a new consciousness every short rest. Normally, this mechanic is to transfer the consciousness that you already have into a new spellbook, but why not create an entirely new one? With the Awakener, magic itself is truly a living entity. Magic is sentient and can think for itself. So imbue this magic that you have compiled into any inanimate object, kind of like the Awaken spell. What kind of personality would an Awaken shrub have? Or an Awaken broom? What about a robe or a pair of shoes or a pair of glasses that can now emote and express themselves? Or maybe give some intelligence to small animals. Awaken some complex thinking within a squirrel or a wild pig that happens to be nearby. Whatever it is, there are your new source of magic that feeds your spells, so keep them safe and keep them close. In Dungeons and Dragons, there is also something called living spells, spells that have awakened their own sentience, so just have one of these floating around as your manifested mind. But exploiting another feature of the Squibes Wizard, we can change any spell's damage type to another damage type as long as we have a spell that does have that type already in the same level of the original spell. So if you want to cast Fireball with lightning damage, then you just have to make sure that you have a lightning damage spell of the same level, like Lightning Bolt. This gives us the Elemental Mage. And in my opinion, this is the best way to make an Elementalist or a single type specialist mage in D&D. Now, as a sorcerer, you can get transmuted spell metamagic since Natasha's book came out, which allows you to use sorcery points to change the damage types of your spells already. But you're limited to all of your sorcery points, which you will probably be using for other purposes anyways. But honestly, you can still make an effective elemental specialist with it. With the wizard I mentioned earlier, with the Shale Magic spell book, he was my geomancer, a master of stone magic. All I did was change some of his spells to be bludgeoning damage, and I was pelting everyone with magical stones. And if you find a spell level that lacks a certain damage type spell, perhaps your DM can allow you to homebrew one. And another pro for a scribe's wizard is that if you want to specialize in non-elemental damage, like psychic, force, radiant, etc., you can and then make your manifested mind a tiny elemental made out of the damage type you chose and cast your spells through them. But Sorcerer isn't the only other class that you can draw parallels from. I say take flavor from anywhere and explain your magic similarly. So with the Echo Mage, your awakened mind looks exactly how your Echo Knight fighter would. In that subclass, your manifested Echo is an alternate version of you in another reality. Take inspiration from Astral Self Monk, where you can conjure an exalted version of yourself through meditation. So flavor your wizard in the same way. Play with the multiverse or astral projection. Now, I actually featured both of these subclasses in other videos, so check out my playlist with all of my subclass flavor explorations. But what about the other subclasses? This conscious spellbook could have an ancestor, like an ancestral guardian barbarian, or be a haunting force like a phantom rogue or it could be a celestial conduit for the voice of your god like a cleric. But maybe taking inspiration from the Artificer class, we can get something unique as well. With the Recorder, you trade your wizard quill with a recorder. Instead of writing things down, you record them on a magical or mechanical device. It is a more modern take on information gathering, of course, and your Awakened Spellbook is just you talking back to yourself. This recorder could even be doing the verbal components for you or all the components with Master Scrivener feature. Instead of you preparing scrolls, or you're preparing glyphed items or spell grenades. Your manifested mind could be a mechanical homunculus or hologram, or take inspiration from Iron Man and have your own Jarvis, especially at later levels when it is helping you recall information, like your own personal Google device. Or don't go too far in the future and have fun with cassette tapes and floppy disks. Put a little modem punk flashback to my last week's video. Now, some other forms of storing knowledge is a little bit more dangerous. Your spellbook is not only a living consciousness, but also a living creature. We take inspiration from the Harry Potter series with the Book of Monsters. And if you remember from at least the movie, uh, the book has a habit of gnawing at fingers or toes of the attempted reader with an aggressive disposition. A wizard has to rub their fingers along the spine of the book to calm it or stun it, depending on how you look at it, before they can open it safely. So what if your Awakened Spellbook is the same? But not only a book, maybe a scroll that essentially has a long tongue or flashcards that are a bunch of flat bugs, each with a special way of accessing the spells or content within so others don't go snooping. In this way, I could also see it be a small hungry mimic 
having to feed the amorphous creature in order for it to solidify back into a book form in order for you to read it. And yet, there are still other ways for objects to obtain some sort of sentience, again taking more inspiration from the Harry Potter series with the Horcrux. We deal with pieces of split souls put into an item to achieve immortality. Whether it be a spellbook or whatever creative arcane focus that you use to replace it, it contains a piece of the original owner. Possibly even the Lich BBEG, splitting his soul into multiple phylacteries to better his chance to live forever. You get to converse with this piece of the soul and who knows? This piece might be the super nice part of them. But with souls attached to an item, we can also contend with ghosts, banshees, poltergeists that have spiritually anchored themselves to the material world through the item, their unfinished business keeping them behind. It could be an artifact of war where the soldier was killed brutally, a goblet of a killed hag, or maybe even a genie lamp where your manifested mind is a djinn that has very specific parameters before they grant your wishes. Or it could still be a book where the souls of the damned was purposely put there like a Necronomicon, a dark vessel that you have yet to grasp fully and probably shouldn't have. Along those dark lines though, consciousness is a liquid when it comes to the far realm. With the horror, you get Cthulhu and Lovecraftian vibes as you delve into madness. The information in your spellbook or otherwise is too much for your consciousness to handle, causing spurts of insanity. At some point of delving into this alien and unfathomable knowledge of magic, your consciousness breaks and physically splits into two, each now sharing parts of the knowledge but never getting the full picture, only piecing them together enough to cast your aberrant spells, but at continued risk to your mind. And if you actually want to play a wizard with mechanics of madness and the associated power and risks, I got you. Check out the Mad Wizard subclass on my website, link below. But if not, you can reflavor this one great as well because this other consciousness could also be a void, an incomprehensible manifestation of your patron that your brain struggles still to comprehend. This giving more warlocky vibes, of course, with a patron, but no deal need be made. But who else than a wizard would find consequences to seeking knowledge where they shouldn't? But there is a difference between warlocky patrons and group patrons. Group patrons were introduced most recently in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything as an individual or organization that unites a party and provides assignments for the party to undertake. Basically a quest to giver. This could be a religious institution, an adventurer's guild, a thieves guild, military, magical school, etc. You get the point. But usually including one person that represents the organization to your party. So let's talk about the Zordon. Now, many of you might get the reference, at least I hope you do, to the floating holographic head from the Power Rangers. He was a galactic mentor wizard that guided the Rangers to fight against the forces of evil. In the same way, your wizard's manifested mind could work similarly. A ghostly head or a scrying head of a patron that is better fit observing from afar. This patron could switch out depending on if the organization had department changes. Other examples in media could be like Jor-El from Superman, dead but still guiding as an AI, the big head from Wizard of Oz that seems a lot more intimidating than they actually are. Or check out this reference poll, Neo Cortex from the Crash Bandicoot. In this instance, the holographic head is the enemy, so maybe your manifested mind is the BBEG scrying in and taunting you, even giving you answers to spells to mock you, test you, or even groom you. But whatever flavor you go with, I hope that you keep your own mind conscious of everything that is possible with this subclass. Let me know what ideas you've had and what other subclasses you would like to see in the comments below. View the full playlist here as we slowly fill it up. But in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off the table. See you in the next one.